Hello everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys a little something new. Um, I just did some research on some stuff, and I'm going to make a pretty cool video. I hope you guys like this. Um, I came to a revelation while I was playing a Skeleton King and a Doom game the other day. Um, I wanted to talk about a point, but I wanted to be able to demonstrate it while still giving like fluid examples, and like I actually felt ambitious enough to do homework for once, so I've done some homework. I've looked through these two replays, we're going to go through them a little bit, and I'm going to talk about item choices on tanky heroes with completely ambiguous item builds. So um, both Skeleton King and um, Doom, in my opinion, have extremely wide item builds. Like their possibilities are, all right, here's the screen. If I get with the red here, you can't even see where my hands are. Like their item builds can go so many different ways. Like when I wrote the Skeleton King guide the other day, I had in the core items, I put like armlet, which isn't even necessary. And then I just had like 85 situational damage items because you can literally get just about anything. Um, the most common um, explanation of altering your item builds usually revolves around evasion. Like if we talk about playing against a PA, you're going to want an MKB. If you're playing against an anti-mage, at some point he's going to have a butterfly and you want to make sure that you have your butter or your MKB before he finishes his butterfly. Um, things like that are really, really important. So that's the most basic example. We're not going to focus on evasion because that example is pretty basic. But I want to talk more about harder to understand things, I think. Uh, Wolfman just sent me a message. Recording. Oops. Okay. So the first replay that I want to go through, um, I did both. Uh, I looked through a Doom replay as well as a, a Skeleton King replay. The first one I want to look at is probably Doom. Spoiler alert. We won both of these. So let's uh, let's download this quick. I don't know if I'm going to keep my webcam this huge. Uh, I will not actually because we need to make sure that you guys can see item builds. So I will go back into small portion. I'm going to keep the uh, this up the whole time because I want to make sure that you guys can see everything and we are going to use plenty of acceleration and plenty of pausing and going back and stuff like that so we're going to look at every team fight and pretty much every major item decision so if we just pause for a second while i talk about this um i should be nope i'm not uh is this the right replay prepare for battle i just pick doom really late or something yeah all right there it is okay so a couple things to point out first of all um like I said, I'm going to be jumping around. If you guys want to watch these replays after the fact, or if you guys want to look through them and see exactly what I did in the areas that I skipped, um, the match IDs for both of these games are going to be in the drop-down box below, so you guys can go check those out. Um, again, I also wrote a Skeleton King guide that's within the client, if you guys want to look at that as well. I don't know if it's popped up by any chance, but it's in here in the guide section somewhere if you guys want to find it. So, um, Did you even see that? No, you didn't. Um, you didn't. So, sorry. That was I pressed Shift-Tab. You didn't notice that, but... <laughs> The overlay, uh, the game source thing, mess that up. So first thing I want to look at, we're just gonna completely skip the early game. Doesn't matter. Early game, you guys know how it works. I miss last hits, bad things happen, and then we get to the mid game. So let's take a look at what's happening right now. So if we get a brief overview of how the game is going at the moment, I have four kills, I have two deaths, and I have three assists. I have a phase boots, a basey, and a drum of endurance. I've also gone pretty heavily into devour. I've gotten scorched earth levels for regen as well as the AOE damage. By the way, this skill is pretty good. Um, does 30 damage per second for 16 seconds and also regens an equivalent amount. It's actually a really great damage source in the early game team fight. I picked up a centaur creep because I wanted the AOE stun. If you look at their hero composition, Slark has really easy gap closers. Phantom Assassin is really easy gap closers, so if those heroes jump on me, there's a pretty good chance that I'll die, so I definitely need some kind of a disable. So I picked up the Centaur Creep, and I stuck with it. Increases my DPS as well. This build that I have right here as a Doombringer is completely ambiguous. You could literally get this in any situation, just about, and I would be like, that works. Uh, my CS isn't very good because my lane was contested a little bit, and I did die apparently two times. I think I must have just respawned upon... Uh, coming back in here, but I have apparently died twice. I've got four kills. I've got three assists. I've been in some team fights, and my CS are pretty low. You should have about 50 in a in a safe lane farm by about 10 minutes. I need to move these post-it notes somewhere else because it's bugging me on my mouse. So, have, I've had an okay game, but not that great of a game. It's gone okay so far, pretty okay. I'm level nine. Uh, my levels compared to my opponents are not so good. And if we look at the gold graph, um, the game's been pretty even. At some point, we did have an advantage, but apparently with some kills things started looking less good for us. So, um, oh man, these pop-ups, there we go. Wow, I actually ninja'd it. Um, so the game's going okay. My build is completely ambiguous. Phase boots is pretty much necessary. I grabbed the base C because I want more mana region and armor. Armor is super important against Slark and PA and Skeleton King. Um, and I got a drum because giving a boost to Doom's mana in the early game is usually pretty important. His int gain is actually really good, but 
you it's better to have like an extra what is it nine int so nine times 13 is like 90 times 3 is 27 so it's like 117 int if i did my math right an extra 117 int is usually about enough for another nuke which might make a difference in a fight and the extra hp and attack speed is really good as well because his, uh, his attack speed is absolutely got awful horrible um the centaur helps for that as well so from here i can basically say i can pretty much farm whatever item i want to and this is where I make my decision. Usually the early game, I don't think about item builds that much, but once I really start getting, start getting into the, the swing of farming and things like that is when um, things start getting pretty serious. Apparently, I didn't take any more notes between the 16.30 and the 26 minute mark, which I'm really surprised about. So I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit and just take a look at what's happening. Um, I, I took a lot more notes on my SK1. So I think I was going to go back and redo the Doom one, but I ended up not doing that. So um, we might not get as much cool information out of Doom, but um, I kind of want to focus on individual team fights, but we might not be able to do that for this game. Like I said, I didn't take as many notes. So I'm just not even going to bother like going through this half-assed. Um, I'm just going to talk about items a little bit in this game, and we'll, we'll look a lot more specifically on this uh, Skeleton King game and how that influenced my choices since I didn't take as good of notes. Um, looks like at the 29 minute mark we jumped forward, so we're going to jump forward. Basically right now my build can go anywhere. Um, as the team fights, I'll just give you like a verbal overview of how the first couple fights went. Um, in terms of how the first fights went, PA is really scary. PA uh, ended up getting a lot of kills early. Uh, he has 5, 1, and 3. The only way we killed him was actually me dooming him earlier uh, when he was a little out of position. This guy is scary when he's got 5 kills. He's level 11, so his crits are pretty serious. And if we look at the rest of the team composition, Slark has died quite a few times because we were able to actually shut him down a bit in the offlane. And um, the Skeleton King as well has kind of bad KD, but he's got an armlet. He is a threat. There's a lot of physical damage, which means I probably want to stack armor. So um, let's just kind of skip forward. I don't want to go all the way to the 30 minute mark because that is probably too far, but I ba we basically hit a swing where I got a lot of assists. We're winning team fights. If we look at the gold graph, it's actually swinging in our favor. So I end up deciding to go for a Shiva's guard. Again, the reason is plus armor is really good against three heroes that do almost entirely physical damage output. And also Shiva's has been buffed recently so that um, it does a 40 attack speed or a slow. This is a huge slow redu uh, reduction. And if this is applying towards three guys that want to attack fast, this helps a whole lot. So um, we're going to skip forward a little bit again, see how I'm doing. Um, again, I have almost got Shiva's. I've got plate mail picked up. And then I think at the a little bit later after this, I do actually have the Shiva's guard. I think we just end up farming a lot. As you can see, my death is, I've actually gotten a death here, but um, not that much action has happened. looks like we got three deaths here. What minute is this? 22? 23? Damn. I'm sad I didn't take better notes. Sorry, guys. Let's just go forward to where I have notes, and then we can continue from there. How about that? 29.04. 29. Let's go back. Okay. So, at this point, I have the sh the Vlads coming. I decided to make a Shiva's, like I said. And um, I also decided to make a Vlad's afterwards because I said, okay, well, we're winning team fights. Things are swinging in our favor, as you can see. We won a huge, holy crap, huge team fight. We should probably watch this. Let's watch this team fight. This is the 26 minute mark. So let's go back to 26 minutes. And we're just going to like press play until we see a fight because like that is that is obviously pretty big. Uh, we're going to go and play your perspective. We're going to click on me and then we're going to watch it. Dead heroes. Okay. So, if we slow this down a little bit, we're pushing a bot tower. I just finished my Shiva's guard, so I have the Aura Slow, which is going to be quite nice. If we take a look at um, the other player, or the other heroes in the game, God, I wish I could use the arrow keys while we were paused. There's a PA over here. She's got a BKB and a, a Battle Fury, which means she has pretty good damage potential. But me dooming her actually counters her really hard, so I pretty much just doomed her the whole game. It removes her evasion, and I believe it also removes the, her possibility of critting. Disables most passive abilities. I believe it does disable both crit and blur, which makes her essentially a right-clicking hero that can't crit. So she basically sucks if you doom her. Um, and even if you can't kill her in the doom duration, it's still 15 seconds where she won't fight with the rest of her team. So it's pretty good. So we're going to watch this fight. Um, we can analyze things based on how it went, and that's going to influence my item decisions. And I'm going to go back to player perspective, because I want to watch my perspective. So here's Doom. I Doom her. She has a haste. She's going to run away. Don't care. This is going to allow us to initiate on the other heroes. Luckily, the Skeleton King ended up going in close. I pop my Shivas as well to slow everybody. Slark dies. SK dies the first time. And here comes a respawn. So we get Coddle, everything's great. It's basically, that was basically a good initiation from us, which led to us winning the team fight. 
And we're going to clean up the rest of the heroes if possible. We're going to kill that guy. Will we kill Skeleton King? I'm not sure. PA jumps in, BKB. But he's really not doing that much damage, honestly. He hasn't crit yet, and that really hurts him. And I think he does end up dying here. Yeah, he does end up dying, so... That's where we got that really, really big EXP advantage that we saw in the graph right when we were Roshani. So if we skip forward a little bit, we should be Roshani. This is like the 29 minute mark. Yep. So we'll resume here. Team fight went great. I have a Shiva's guard. I decide after that fight especially that everything seemed pretty good. So I was like, I want to keep the armor stack up. The reason I grabbed a Vlad's right here, by the way, I'm not that into life stealing myself, but giving five armor to myself and my allies is really important, especially against a hero. Again, PA, Slark, Doom, or Skeleton King. So we'll resume the game, we grab the Aegis, and now action happens. Sarko's then he tries to steal the Aegis. We're gonna have a team fight here. I'm just gonna run this at normal speed because I don't wanna waste too much time. Alright, this is where I wanna watch. So I take a Coddle Nuke, I take a Dark Pact, I'm gonna take a Slark Leap as well. And basically all this extra armor that I had did virtually nothing for me. Because pretty much what happened was I got magic nuked to death. And I only had about 1600 HP. So we'll speed this up for a second while I respawn. But at this point, a lot of my support heroes are going to be dead. I get the Doom off, but that would have been great to have way earlier. And from here, same stuff happens. Magic nukes, magic nukes, magic nukes, and I will end up going down again. So when something like that happens, when you previously feel really strong, this happens to me almost every game that I play, where I do really well early. It's You have to be super careful about not getting over-aggressive. Like, if you get free farm one game, you might be like, oh, I'm insanely strong, I should fight. And it'll cause you to do stuff that's slightly too overly aggressive and then you'll end up dying from it and that's important to avoid because if you don't avoid that stuff it's gonna kill your snowball and that's not necessarily what happened here because it's mid game and i'm doomed so i can farm pretty fast but i obviously found there's a, a weakness in my armor despite having plus 20 armor with the vlads up i still can die all the magic nukes are too much to me and the initiation wasn't necessarily perfect either so we could criticize that if if we would have been able to doom pa at the start and then cause a team fight like that it would have been fine but Bad circumstances, and they had the counter to what killed me. So, problems are found. So, what I'm basically missing is either magic resistance or magic immunity. I ended up going for magic immunity this game, I believe, um, which I pick up a little bit later. And also, while I was looking around the 35-minute mark, um, I was looking for a new creep. And I had an ogre club at this point. Things had continued. I don't know what the uh, the total farm is. Looks like the, uh, the overall farm is still in our advantage. Things are going pretty good for us, despite losing that little team fight. And uh, my choice was, I was looking for an Alpha Wolf, basically, because I wanted to increase my damage output. So I go to the jungle, and I'm looking around, and then I found an Ogre Magi. Now, this is something that's very honestly worth considering. Um, Ogre Magi creeps, they give 8 armor, I believe, to the person that you um, cast the armor on. And it also, it's, a, it's effectively just like Lich's Frost Armor. It reduces attack speed by, I believe, 30% and movement speed by 20, which we can check as soon as I eat this. So I decided to go eat the ogre creep. So 30% movement speed slow, 20% attack speed. I, was, I had it backwards. So not only do I already have a Shiva's and a Vlad's, I now give myself an extra 8. And getting a late game ice armor like this is not bad, because I don't cast it on just myself, I'll cast it on my squishies and my allies. Again, three melee heroes, all of these guys are going to get procced by it, and all of their damage is going to be reduced by 8. The, with the only exception really being like the Battle Fury Cleave, which essentially does pure damage in a way. So... Um, very important decision that I made to adjust my item build based on the situation. I still want to make BKB, of course, but this further cements the extra armor that I have. So if we skip forward, I get a BKB at about 36 minutes because we've been farming in downtime. Great stuff. Just finished a BKB. And now I am going to have insane physical damage protection and those nukes that they all have, they're going to do absolutely nothing for me. So team fight's going to happen at 38 minutes. We can take a look at how that goes for us. I'm not sure where I was. Let's press play and see what's happening. So it looks like we are pressuring the tier 2. Oh, that's right. We, were we did a smoke gank, tried to catch a couple, and then it just probably got ganked top. So we're going to TP to the top lane and try to make a fight happen. So I was able to make that. Rubik almost TP'd. Again, I want to doom the PA. want to shut him down completely. Arrow caught Slark. I'm able to kill the PA. And look how different this is now. Now they're initiating on me. I'm basically taking zero damage, and there's no way they can do damage to me. Now, granted, the Rubik wasn't there. He did actually back out during the team fight, but landing the arrow on Slark, I went Magic Commune, and I was able to doom the PA. Things were like, like they had no chance at all at killing me. And I'm continuously casting Frost Armor on my allies as well, especially once I get jumped on by melee heroes. So 
really important um, adjustment to my item build. And I'm sure you guys have seen lots of Doom builds. Most of them are usually like Radiance into AC or something like that. I want something that doesn't technically give you damage, but it still gives you utility and still allows your team to win team fights. Now, if we look at my allies item builds, Nature's Prophet has a semi DPS build at the moment. Mirana has a utility Mirana build. Um, Soul Assumption from Visage is actually a pretty serious damage source, so we can't necessarily look at that and say that she's not doing damage. And Death Prophet as well with Exorcism has good damage source. But I didn't really go a conventional damage build. And even still, having a lot of int and a lot of minus attack speed that's now being applied by both Shivas and Ice Armor does help me to do pretty good team fights. So next note I have, we have another team fight at 40 minutes. So let's go watch that. Pretty much everything that happens in between these two minute periods is farming. So it looks like we... I think I skipped too much there. Let's go back a little bit. I feel like there, there was stuff that happened. Okay, yep. So, we pushed. I think I, my times are wrong. They're based on the in-game clock instead, maybe. So we basically, after we won that team fight, we came in to push four dead heroes. We can speed this up. We're going to get a Rax. We got a range Rax, and then we escape. We can't take the mid racks because the tier 2 tower is there. Looks like the bottom's going to die. But we should be able to push this, take the tier 2, and now we're kind of snowballing out of control because of um, good teamfight win. So, gold graph goes way up, and we're going to go take Roshan now. So we basically got a racks, we got a tower, and we're going to get Roshan. Sell my TP scroll, grab an Aegis, looking for another fight. So, don't know if we're going to catch them though. Alright, Pia's going to go in, I do him again, which basically shuts him down for the whole fight. Frost armor is up on core heroes, so we kill the Coddle, and that's going to be it, so. So yeah, from here on out, the, it was pretty much a steamroll. After we won that team fight top, it was just team fight win after win after win. But sometimes there's, uh, sometimes things happen that kind of surprise me about item builds, and that, that happened this game, as well as the, the next game that I'll show you. It's when you have, like, the perfect item build set compared to what you had before. Um, and what I mean by that is basically that there are parts in this game where I didn't feel strong, where where I got killed quite easily or in burst damage. And once you actually find the sweet spot of like predicting or perfectly counting your opponents while also snowballing on them, it feels really good. Like we did win the team fight top and we're snowballing from that. And our gold graph is in our advantage, but for the overall gold amount, it's not ridiculous. Like this is a pretty big gold advantage, but it's not obscene. Like I have all this gold built up in my stash as well as here, which means it's not in my inventory, so essentially I don't have it. So, like, just perfectly counting your opponents feels fantastic. So, um, the escape is in about 40 seconds, I believe. Um, we'll just skip over here. Take a look at the bot lane. Uh, it looks like we're diving or something, but we'll just watch this for a bit. PA gets two crits off in a row, which does a lot of damage to our team. And that's going to result in a lot of dead heroes. So, we're able to kill the PA again, but now things get a little weird because we're all low HP. We'll just speed this up a bit. Alright, so basically we get a buyback from PA. And I have 600 HP and I have an Aegis. And now I'm escaping. So we're just going to watch this fight at normal speed, I think. I put an Ice Armor on Memoria because I thought he was going to get jumped on. So like Slark can do no damage to me right now. He's mostly magic burst. He doesn't really, he didn't really farm enough to get the item build up. And it pretty much completely limited his damage output. I mean, that was like two heroes versus three. And it was very, very difficult for us to die. Because I had ice armor on us. And uh, the BKB pretty much stopped any of their disables going through, except for Drum. Or except for Basher, excuse me. So that part felt pretty cool. I was like, why am I not dead yet? But the fact was, I had an insane amount of armor. If we cut back to it quickly. I have an insane amount of armor. I think I might not have casted ice armor on me until later. But insane amount of armor. Um, magic immunity. All their damage sources were blocked, and they're screwed. It's it's kind of the same thing. Like, this is a really elaborate uh, example of having just a BKB when they all have magic damage, basically. It's like, I, I just covered all my bases, and I was impossible to kill, and therefore I could continue casting spells like um, Level Death and um, Scorched Earth and things like that. So, works out great. So, that's basically uh, a Doom game that I played the other day. Again, if you guys want to watch the whole game, you can. It's in the, the match description is down below. We won shortly after this. So, if you guys want to watch the whole game, or if you want to watch the first 16 minutes, you can. Because I know I skipped all the way through that, so... Um, yeah, that's the Doom game. So, counter your opponent's items and heroes. They had three physical DPS, so I wanted tons of armor. Shivas, Vlads, and then a BKB to really seal the magic community in there. I did get the AC before the end of the game because I figured, hey, why not more armor? And also AC and Vlads both stack now, so that means that Vlads gives a 5 armor aura to me and my teammates. And AC does the same. So, plus 10 armor, a free plate mail, 
to everybody on my team while still making me harder to kill and increasing my DPS because of the attack speed. I think that would have been the perfect item build. Because at this point, this guy is not going to kill. Like, if all of my supports have an extra 10 armor, it just pays off very, very heavily. It really does. So, okay, so that's the Doom game. Let's hop into the Skeleton King game quick. We'll have some slightly different principles, but still like principles of being a beast tank. This is different than the Skeleton King game that I posted yesterday. I played this game a day or so after, I believe. A day or so after the actual match that I uploaded. So, uh, I took a lot more notes on this one. Or... Okay, alright, so... We're gonna skip the first 20 minutes. This might seem a little ridiculous to you, but I think it's completely legitimate. Um, I went Midas first. Oh, this is in-game. Oh, sorry, this is in-game 20 minutes. Not actually out of game 20 minutes. So let's just like peek at where we're at at 19 minutes. All right, so here I am. One assist. I got a tower. I have 100 CS at 15 minutes. I have a hand of Midas, and I'm about to get my Radiance. So if we just peek over to the 20 minute mark, basically, or the 20 minute in-game clock, or not in-game clock, excuse me, uh, replay timer. I just got my Radiance. The Curry's flying back. I have a Clarity Potion. There's a team fight about to start in the bot lane, so I want to be there, basically, is what's happening. So we'll just watch from here on. Um, essentially, I mean, it's not important to watch the lane. I, I went the more typical laning stun build with max stun, then mortal strike. My hand of Midas really does give me a lot of uh, EXP acceleration if we compare my levels to everybody else in the game. I'm by far the highest level. And this is the main thing that you should be using hand of Midas for. It's, it's not necessarily just the gold acceleration, but also getting more levels up is really important. Getting your second level of reincarnation and decreasing your cooldown, getting to level 16 really fast is super important. And even getting extra levels of Vampiric Aura is great because it will increase your, um, your total life steal. So... Hitting in level 12. I mean, look at this. Blitz has gotten 5 kills and 2 assists. I've only been in 1 kill, and I'm still the highest level in the game. Um, except for Puck, I guess. Puck is 3 kills somehow. He actually doesn't have a Midas. I don't know how this guy's a higher level than me, but... Um, yeah. He was an offlane, by the way. This is an offlane mag, so that's why he's probably slightly behind Puck. So, so yeah. Super hardcore farm. I went Midas, and then I went Radiance. So, I want to talk about Radiance quick. Um, when I wrote the ske my Skeleton King guide, for example, I, I should probably be able to pull it up here. Oops. Can I? I guess I can't do it as an observer, but um, for Skeleton King, I generally don't recommend Radiance. I don't think it's the best Skeleton King item, and based on playing this game, I think there's some ways that you have to build around it, but you can't necessarily build it in a conventional way. Um, the reason that it's not necessarily better than Armlet, Armlet gives you basically plus 65 damage. It gives you a base of 15, I'm sorry, uh, 9 damage. You add 31 when you turn it on, which puts you up to 40, and then you add 25 strength to that, which puts you up to 65. So Armlet, for a mere 2,600 gold, gives you plus 65 damage. Radiance gives you plus 60. So for half the cost, Armlet gives you the same amount of right-click damage. Obviously, there's Radiance Burn, which overall does a net huge AoE and things like that, but um, I wanted to try Radiance this game for the main reason being I had an insane amount of money and I felt like doing something weird and just testing out item builds. And number two, they have a lot of blink heroes that are going to be able to get away if they can blink. Sk Sand King is one example, Puck is the other example. If you do Radiance burn damage to these guys, they're not going to be able to escape as easily. So that's the main reason I picked it up. Another limitation on Skeleton King that I didn't necessarily talk about much in the last replay Super easy to kite. It's not hard to run away from this guy. His movement speed is okay. It's at 300. I didn't end up grabbing movement speed items this game. Um, my last Skeleton King replay that I made, I got a 4 staff, but since 4 staff has been nerfed to reduce to not do damage anymore, I don't think it's really that useful. Grabbing on Skeleton King is too expensive for 2,000 gold. I think you're better off just going damage items. But basically, I wanted to just be alive, stand in the middle of your opponents, and do Radiance Burn damage. Normally when you grab Armlet, you want to right-click and kill people, but in this case, I just wanted to go Radiance. So what this basically encourages me to do is to tank more than DPS. We already looked at the fact that Armlet does overall more damage for less gold, so do I really want to right-click DPS all the way? Not as much. I really just want to stand in my opponent's faces and do damage. So we're going to watch the first team fight that I get to do. Uh, we're going to go to player perspective and I'm going to watch. Uh, I got a clarity potion. I popped it before I TP'd because I wanted to make sure my mana was up to full. And I'm going to get there a little late, but this is my first team fight, basically. As you guys can see, I'm doing a whole lot here to win this fight. Just in time. I actually got no assists out of that at all, but... But I got there on time, and I was there for my team. So regardless of me not actually helping with those two kills, 
even still, I'm able to pressure tower. And this is some this is a way that you should play when you play Skeleton King. You should play pretty aggressive, because you have to remember that you can die twice before you're actually dead. So being really aggressive is important. My attack speed is still pretty low, because I only have Hand of Midas. I don't actually have the gold for Treads yet, because I just wanted to finish Radiance as fast as possible. And a 15 minutes of Radiance with Midas is great, so I can't be too unhappy about this. But uh, didn't get the tower last hit, doesn't matter that much though. Still get good gold. So we can push off of this. I'm going to speed this up a little bit as we run towards the tier 2 tower. Don't want to waste anybody's time, of course. And now we're going to basically start the slow siege for a tier 2. Tier 2s are usually pretty hard to get. Um, I was considering throwing the stun. I didn't really feel like it because he ran away, basically. I have to be a little careful about mana right here. I didn't get any stat levels. Um, I'll have people kill that rocket for me, but... Should be using my Midas here, but I forgot. Don't have that many stat levels, so I have to be a little concerned with mana, so I can't necessarily throw a lot of Hellfire Blast. I do take some nukes here, which is actually a problem, because that's going to hurt my overall HP in the next fight, but... Let's get Shackled, unfortunately. Power Shuttle come through. I'm going to go aggressive to try to help this out, and a great silence from Puck prevents me from actually stunning for the first couple seconds. I was able to stun the Skeleton King, though, which helps. And I was doing Radiance Burn this whole time as well. As, as you can see, I will be able to kill the Skeleton King as a result. But getting Shackled to the tower is going to result in me dying. So a little bit to talk about here. Um, really bad team fight for a Uh Losing the Magnus right at the start hurts big time. I was also playing a little too aggressive going back in, but I did get chain stun basically and put in a point where I, I'm just going to die for nothing. Um, I was still able to kill the Skeleton King, uh, I'm sorry, the Sand King, and I, I'm sure I assisted with the Puck dying as well since I had Radiance Burn, and yeah, I got a kill and an assist, so I did help out, but this is a perfect example of me feeling insanely strong because I got a Radiance at 15 minutes with a Midas, but I still ended up going a little too aggressive and I ended up dying from it, so not the biggest end of the world, but as you can see, bam, I do end up dying, so. Um, next one, that is... 2153. Okay, bad team fight. We just watched that, guys. And now we're going to go to an ancient fight. So we're just going to accelerate. If you want to see how my item progresses, um, I pick up a treads and then I basically just farm. I grabbed a quelling blade because I tried to get a kill off on the Nature's Prophet, but he TP'd out before I got there. So no kill there. And as we accelerate, I'm sure I don't think anything happened in this point except for me punching creeps. And if we get to 2531, we can then watch the next fight. So, since that has happened, no new items, I've farmed gold, I've used Midas, I've got power treads. Um, we just spotted the gyro pulling the ancients back, so we'll take a look at this. Play. And I wanted to initiate on this, definitely. I did use Mortal Strike for once, I'm sure you guys are proud of me. But even though I'm stunned this whole time, still doing some damage to the Skull Thinking, or the Sand King, which is good. And I'm going to respawn off of that. So, we basically killed the Gyro, and we killed the, the Sand King. Gyro, by the way, um, not that many damage items, and the Skeleton, or the Sand King has actually just rushing Blink. A little greedy of him. So, from this point on, I basically have to decide what I want to do with my item build. I've got Radiance, I've got Treads, I've got all my early game builds. I, I started a foundation for an item build, but I need to adjust it based on, based on the enemy heroes. And if we look at the enemy heroes really quickly... Well, I don't know. Um, take a second to think about what's what's the first thing that you guys see. Um, I don't know what it is, what you're thinking, but my thought was they've got blink daggers, which is why I got radiance. And number two is they don't have that much single target damage. It is a little lacking. If you look at the hero composition, they have great disables. They have pretty darn good AOE, but Skeleton King has two times of his HP. Does he worry about AOE as much? And the answer for that is absolutely not. He doesn't have to worry about AOE because AOE is... The, the nature of AoE is that it does damage to everybody, which means it doesn't do that much single target damage, which means lots of pe people with lots of HP. It's not a big deal. So they have all this AoE. The only carry on their team is Gyrocopter, and Gyrocopter does good damage with the Rocket Barrage, but that's going to scale off late game. He's mostly going to build around Flak Cannon, and as with this Mythical Hammer, you can probably guess that he's going to build a BKB. And BKB is really not that great of a damage item. He's actually died a lot this game, so this hurts his possibility to, to get a single target damage. Um, so this basically tells me they don't have a lot of single target damage, their carry is not going to get a whole lot of single target damage. He's mostly he's mostly an AoE carry. So that means all I have to do... You can kind of look at AoE damage as magic damage in a way because um, it's kind of the same principles. If a carry is AoE, like another good example is Medusa, she doesn't have a ton of single target damage. She ends up doing a lot of AoE, which means that it kind of... It has this like very slow buildup that doesn't peak as hard. Like a PA, tons of single target damage, so I'd have to be worried about getting bursted down and most likely armor is the right choice. But against magic nukes... And AoE damage, HP is the best thing you can build if you're also, if you have some damage components by being alive. A good example, I'm, I know I'm talking about this forever, but I just want to like 
flesh out this idea heavily. A good example of a hero that can do damage just by being alive, Necrolite is a good example of that. If Necrolite stays alive, he's going to be able to do death pulses and have more chances to heal your allies and kill your opponents. Another good example is... Skeleton King with a Radiance. I don't know. Um, I grabbed a Radiance, so it does damage just for me being alive, just for me standing there. The only exception to this is if I get Hexed or if they have Magic Immunity is the only time um, that they won't take damage. If you guys didn't know, that Hex does disable Radiance Burn, so kind of a cool idea. Um, use it against... Uh, Spectres, things like that. Hex is really good against them. So if I have a Radiance, and I have a lot of HP, and it's really hard to kill me, and I have to die twice, how, how are they going to win the fights? You know, I'm going to constantly do the damage output. So anyways, um, after we won the fight, I decided to take the Ancients. This was really greedy. This was like really greedy for me because um, my reincarnation was up, wasn't up, and I got really low HP. But anyways, we go back to farming. I'll pause again. Let's see where my notes are at. Uh, that was the Ancient fight. We've got a mid-tower fight at 28, so we'll skip forward to 28.15. Um, let's see what I purchased. I have purchased a Reaver since then, so this gives me, I believe, about 500 HP for 25 strength. This also increases my damage by 25, but you should never look at a heart as a damage item on a, on a strength hero. The only cases that you should maybe th consider that is uh, Chaos Knight, because strength applies to his illusions, and his illusions can crit with strength gain. They can't crit on like an MKB or something. Um, it doesn't actually increase their crit amount. So a heart is pretty good for carries like um, like Chaos Knight. Uh, it works in this case, actually, because I have Empower. So Empower increases your base damage by 50. The first number is your base damage, which means if I increase my strength by 40, the Empower gives me an extra 20 damage just because I have a heart. If I got an MKB, I would get no bonus damage from Empower. So in this case, there was some synergy, but it wasn't like we drafted around this or anything. So that's another important thing to look at is that heart doesn't really increase your damage, it just mostly increases your HP. But in this case, I get 40 damage from the heart and I get an extra 20 from Empower, which is kind of cool. So we can watch what happens here. I believe we're trying to take the tier one tower now. My HP is pretty good. I've got my ulti up, of course. And now that I have this much HP, um, let's, let's look around really quick so you guys have a gauge of... Um, what everybody else's items were. Nature's Prophet has a Shadow Blade with a Ultimate Orb. Gyrocopter has not since that last point finishes BKB. Sand King does have a Blink Dagger, so we can expect a SK Ulti. Uh, Puck just has a Blink Dagger, so he's going to have Magic Burst. And Windrunner has a Force Staff, and for some god-awful reason, a Hand of Midas. So, at this point, I'm really hard to kill. I'm way ahead of uh, GPM over everybody else in the game. So, if we look at GPM, I'm at 562. If we look at my net worth, I'm going to be at 13k. They're not even close to me in net worth. Um, and obviously, this is a pub game, guys, but I'm not teaching you how to be a professional player. I'm trying to teach you guys how to play pub games better, so please save the nasty YouTube comments about... Derp, derp, yeah, whatever. Okay, so really far ahead in terms of gold, and because of that, this is similar to what I did in Doom in the last game, I want to counter what my opponents are working with with items because it's going to guarantee that it makes me really hard to kill and that I can absolutely contribute. And this is me thinking, I, I just figure this stuff out on the run, uh, on the go. I just say, okay, whatever, I want to do this as I play. And it really helps the game. Uh, the game's in the impact a lot. I'm having them kill the rocket because I don't want to get stunned. And then puck initiates. So, so far I've been kind of chain stunned. I stunned the, the Skeleton King to prevent him from getting his ulti off. Really important. It was mostly Blitz as well, but I was able to set it up. We, we win the fight pretty handily. I'm going to end up dying to the tower, but I respawn anyways. And Blitz is also able to clean up the Gyrocopter. So just by standing there, even though I'm getting Chain Disabled, Radiance Burn, things like that. I didn't get to throw my stuns that much. I did use Mortal Strike, I believe, against the Windrunner, I think. Something like that. But we win the fight. In 45 seconds, I can respawn again. And I basically lost nothing from that. So three dead heroes. I'm tanky. I'm kind of hard to kill. And I sent the Courier to go finish the, the heart now. So I think we can also... Do, should I keep watching this? I can't remember. What was that? That was mid-tower fight. Talk about heart. I definitely talked about heart. Did I talk about heart enough? Um, we're going to resume this. Uh, I've got They're something attacking. in three minutes, apparently, so we'll speed this up just Radiant's a little bit. Tower is under attack. And I think at this point I just go hit up the jungle, so... Jungling, jungling, yeah. I believe we're going to take the, uh, the Aegis. I maxed out on skills now, which is great. 30%... Uh, aura, I've got lots of stats. My each or my mana pool is actually not that high, so I maybe should be a little concerned with the mana this game, but they have no mana drainers, so it's not the end of the world. They're gearing up to take a team fight, but I don't really have to be that concerned with this. Um 
Oh yeah, oh, yeah, we can watch this fight. Skeleton King does a really nice Aegis Steal here. I wasn't that concerned with taking it because I didn't expect to die myself, but... We are able to take this, the Skeleton King down though. I think he respawns and then blinks away. Unfortunately, Radiance doesn't burn that fast. It takes like a, a quarter of a second to trigger out, so... We weren't able to get the kill. It was a nice play from him, though. It was a little greedy, but he was able to get the Aegis. And we still got the Roshan, so we didn't lose that much from that. And honestly, I didn't really need the, the Aegis to stay alive. But So what was the next part that I wanted to watch? It wasn't really a team fight, but we kind of got baited into that one by watching. Um, 31.40? Okay, so a little bit ahead of where we're at right now. 31.37, that's close enough. So... We've taken the Aegis, I uh, lost the Aegis that is, and now we're pushing mid. I have a heart, if we check out the uh, other items that we're working with. Still no BKB for Gyro, he actually does have the money, so he could purchase this right now. Um, uh, Sand King has a blink still, just a naked blink. Prophet is still at the same items, almost has a sheep but doesn't have it. And it's going to be a Yules on Puck, but he doesn't quite have it. Windrunner pretty close to a sheep as well, so. So I will continue to punch things. I have a heart regen at the moment, so I'm basically getting 60 HP per second at the moment. So I can just kind of hit the tower. It doesn't really bother me that much. I'll back up a little bit as the enemy heroes come forward, but right now we have a creep wave, so I felt pretty confident just taking the tower. We take the tower, we do not have to fight this, and we can just back up from it, honestly. Um, again, I'm getting so much regen that it doesn't quite matter that much. I think we're going to have a fight now. I was not able to kill him with a Mortal Strike new combo. But who cares? So you guys... He was, he was aiming for the courier, guys. And I got it. So, again. Like, even though I've been kind of in the brunt of a lot of this, I don't care. I mean, I'm almost dead, really. They could try to jump on me, but they know that if they jump on me and they try to burst me down, I'm just going to respawn anyways. Before the rest of this team fight goes on, I just want to talk about that for a bit more. In normal carry situations, you can't be that aggressive. Because, if especially if you take a little bit of nuke harass and you're at this point of HP... They'll just jump on you. They'll jump on you and they'll burst you down and they'll kill you. So you have to be really careful. The bonus to Skeleton King and the way that I played him was as a result of this, or I did this because he can, is that you can be aggressive. You can try to bait your, your opponents into jumping on you because you can respawn. Um, another thing to talk about for, uh, for Heart that I didn't mention before, it gives you about 1,000 HP, and that means that as you respawn, you get a net about 2k HP out of the item. So it really pays off. HP items really pay off on Skeleton King. So we can watch the rest of the fight now. That was really good by Blitz. He ended up, I think, four staffing forward and screwing him back, something like that. So we get the kill. I have 800 HP, but I will respawn this. The heart's about to come off cooldown, and there we go. 60 HP per second. I'm going to heal up. So team fight went pretty well for us. We should be able to back off off of this, I believe, and continue farm. Um, next point that we can look at is Bot Rax team fight at 3720. And apparently, I could have swore there was more going on. I might, might have forgotten like one last note. Alright, so um, since then I've picked up an AC. The reason I grabbed an AC at this point is because I already had a ton of HP. I also have the Radiance Burn. I have okay attack speed, but it could be better. And also the minus armor helps out for killing towers. So I pick up an AC, it gives me 15 armor, makes my overall estimated head points increase drastically, guaranteed. And now they're even more single target damage. Since then, Gyro's only been able to pick up a BKB. They've got a sheep on this guy, they've got a, a Yules on this guy, and they've got a sheep on this guy. So they have a lot of sheeps now, so they can stop my Radiance Burn damage, but... Their single target damage is not really adequate, and I've just made it a lot harder for them to kill me, so watch this now. Oops, too fast. Alright, so, I take damage, Puck blinks on me, we're gonna try to kill Puck. He actually does die pretty easily, here. Fortunately, Wind Run is a good spell, guys. And now as I'm almost dead, I'm gonna run away a bit. So, I do have my ulti, here comes the respawn. This looks pretty bad. I'm surrounded by five heroes, so. This is the perfect example of Skeleton King getting kited. He just gets kited. No matter what you do, he gets kited. I always like to turn fights like this when they're half HP and I go from high to low ground. Even that Yules is not effective, because I'm still doing Radiance Burn. Like this whole time. Look how hard it was for them to kill me. And I don't necessarily have an MKB to kill the Windrunner in burst moments and things like that, but. Just being able to stay alive, I can outlast them. And my ulti's almost off cooldown again. So we win another team fight. 
I basically leveraged my tankiness and the radiance to just do a slightly off kilter item build. Normally I would have a armlet, I would almost go armlet into another damage item like I did for the last replay that I made. Armlet, and in this case I would do MKB probably, uh, maybe a BKB. If you're a little bit, if you're less survivable, grabbing a BKB is really good because they have so many stuns. If I just would have gone like BKB armlet with a uh, MKB, I would have been like right clicking like a machine. So since I'm going with the tanky, the whole tanky thing, I grab a Heaven's Halberd. Watch, he's gonna hex me in a second. Watch the Radiance burn on him. See how it goes away? Hex does stop the Radiance burn. For grabbing this gives me 20% evasion. Should be able to kill the Nature's Prophet and he does get killed, so. Um, if we talk about Heaven's Halberd really quick, it's a really situational item on Strength Heroes. Uh, on any hero like Skeleton King, it does give him 45 damage, which is pretty good. Uh, 20 strength and 25 damage. The maim chance is pretty much irrelevant. We don't really worry about that. But the main reason it's great is the evasion. 25% evasion means that if it wasn't hard enough to kill me already, they're also going to have to have a chance to miss. Now, this is countered by hexes, and they already have two hexes, so it's not necessarily the most useful thing. Evasion is countered by hex, as is all of these other things we've been talking about, Radiance Burn, stuff like that. So the hexes are pretty good against me, but it just makes me even harder to kill. If you guys thought it was hard to kill here, um, we will just have to watch. Oops. Watch for it a little bit, and we'll catch a different moment in a second. I think it is here. Okay, so, at this point, I knew how insanely tanky I was. I just want to hit towers, basically. We want to continue pushing. We don't really have to let this game go on. And now you can just see, this is like a freak occurrence. And I wanted to share this with you guys, because I laughed so hard. Right there. Because they literally threw so many chain stuns on me. I was stunned for like 10 seconds, and they did half of my HP. And that was it. They have to kill me. They have to do like four times that damage to legitimately kill me. And this whole time, I'm taking a lot of force from their carry as well as their Windrunner. And that was one of my lives. I did want to back up because I didn't want to overdive and I saw the them going on my supports. So I played a little safe here, but... Put the Heaven's Halberd on them. I could have just stunned him and maybe tried to kill him, but... I basically just wanted to take racks. Skeleton King doesn't care, man. He just right clicks. Sometimes he's a pig too. But like the game basically just got to the point where I was able to snowball and make the correct item decisions and analyze where their damage sources are and what their damage sources are and at, and then you just don't have to care anymore. You just look like a right clicking noob who just doesn't, he's like, I'm just gonna rax this, you know? But I love that. It's like you can, I could play in a way that allowed me to look brain dead. How cool is that? And, and not care about them. It's like, I felt like a raid boss, you know? It doesn't get to ha you don't get to have that feeling very often, I feel like. But when it does happen, it feels really great. And it's just because I was able to predict um, item builds and get the right pickup. I mean, like, the same stuff's happening right now. I'm like, oh, I'm getting stunned? That's cool. Don't care. So, I've only died once this game. Um, that was that bot, that bot team fight at, like... What, 12 minutes? Or, that was like 17 minutes, 17 to 20 minutes, somewhere in there. When I had just Radiance and Midas, and I got chain stunned by the tier 2 when Bliss got shackled, so. I was trying to bait out his uh, phase shift, and I got it baited, but then he blinked afterwards, because he can stop the Radiance sprint for 3 seconds. And that's pretty much the end of the game, so, yep, we're just going to finish things out, do a little bit of fountain farming. And hopefully get some kills. Right clicking, yeah! Wait, 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 wait. We need to watch this. So this is another good demonstration of how tanky I am. These miss some of the times, as you guys can see. And I was regening that whole time as well. 82 per second right now. At this point I can sell my Midas and I'd probably get an MKB or an Abyssal Blade. Probably an Abyssal Blade. So that I could actually shut down people. Abyssal Blade's really important actually on Skeleton King just because you can uh, prevent them from... You can prevent people from uh, getting away from you like blinks and things like that. You can just jump in, hex some guy, or Abyssal Blade him and then just right click him until he dies. It's one of those items on a hero like Skeleton King that's really needed just because he is, he is very easily kited. So uh, I got 766 GPM, I became insanely hard to kill and I basically never died past that one moment so... Um, Skeleton King is a really good example of tanky item builds, as is Doom. Um, there's a lot of other carries that are almost entirely damage focused, like PA is almost entirely damage focused, Kunkka is almost entirely damage item focused. But I just wanted to put Skeleton King and Doom in the same video here to talk about how they're both just really tanky heroes 
and um, building the correct tank items while still getting damage items um, usually makes you insanely strong. So I didn't showcase like insane armling toggling or armlet toggling or tons of usage of um, mortal strike or whatever his uh, his third skill. But um, I think this is a pretty good example of how to like prepare your item builds as people uh, and adjust based on what heroes they have. Again, um, the first point I made here, you can do the same with evasion and MKBs. That's really important. If you can get a, if you can get a really early butterfly, it's going to absolutely crush your enemy carries. But the same goes for a lot of things. Grabbing BKBs for crucial team fights, uh, grabbing mechs for crucial team fights, it all kind of comes into a line. Um, and you can always um, also shorten it down to say, if I got that item for that team fight, I would have done so much better. So that's why it's so important when you miss last hits or why you miss kills or things like that, because you could have your items at crucial points at earlier amounts of time. If I would have delayed my Radiance by five minutes because I was bad at last hitting, I might not have been able, I might not even have been able to get two kills in that bot team fight, like I wouldn't have killed that Sand King, and I, maybe the Puck wouldn't have died either. You know, things like that. So um, timing windows are really important as, as well. But I, that's it's kind of a very small point of the video, but it all kind of blends together. Grabbing items at the right time, hitting the timing windows, having the right items for the right cases, and playing to your hero strengths in this case. Being tanky as hell and really really hard to kill. So I think that's it for the video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I guess I wish I took better notes on my Doom. Uh, all I did for the first half of the replay was take notes on when I got items up instead of looking at team fights and adjusting on that. Um, but I did get to talk about it when I died that one time in Roshan Pit and then needed a BKB, so I guess I'm moderately happy with that. And I think I did a good job with notes in the SK game. So, all right, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. Go follow me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm going to MLG Dallas in a week, I believe. It's gonna be really, really fun. It's in Anaheim. I'm sorry, not MLG Dallas. An MLG Anaheim. I went to Dallas. That was the last one. So ML MLG Anaheim's coming up. We are casting tonight. If you guys want to watch me cast, it's going to be on twitch.tv slash beyond the summit. Hopefully Twitch is all good by that point. Um, it's for the Alienware Cup. I might not be casting, actually. I might be doing half hosting, and I might cast some of the games, but it's going to be like a nine-hour night. I'll start like midnight, I think, and it goes to like 9 a.m., so I'm going to be really tired. Uh, but it should be fun. Uh, the Alienware Cup has nine teams that are qualified for the international so these are top tier mostly asian teams navi is actually going to asia currently i don't know if they're actually there yet maybe their games aren't until like a week later but i think we're on maybe group b something like that might be doing group b tomorrow or tonight and the following days i'm not entirely sure but there's gonna be lots of great games coming up tonight uh with top tier production value and i hope you guys are there for that so i think that's it yeah all right thanks for watching guys i'll see you later goodbye